Later this year or early next year, an income tax rate is going to be set by the Scottish Parliament for the very first time. It's called the Scottish Rate of Income Tax or the SRIT and it's going to be paid by Scottish taxpayers from April 2016. The way it works is that the main income tax rates for Scottish taxpayers will be reduced by 10 percentage points and the SRIT will be added on instead. The SRIT is a bit of a blunt instrument though because it has to be applied equally across all the tax bands. This means the Scottish Government can't use the SRIT to make income tax more progressive by reducing the lower rates and increasing the higher rates. That will be possible in the future. The Scottish Parliament is going to get complete control over income tax rates and bans for Scottish taxpayers under the proposals put forward by the Smith Commission. So how do you decide if you're a Scottish taxpayer and have to pay the SRIT? Well, it depends on where you live, not where you work. For most people, it will be a very simple test. If you live in Scotland and don't have a house anywhere else, you will be a Scottish taxpayer and the SRIT will apply to you. If you have more than one house, it depends on whether the house in Scotland is your main place of residence. If that is not clear, it's a question of counting the days spent in Scotland. If you spend more days in Scotland than outside it, you will be a Scottish taxpayer. The SRIT doesn't apply to all your income, by the way. It only applies to employment and pensions income and income from property. The SRIT doesn't apply to savings income, like interest and dividends, and the normal UK rates will apply to them. The SRIT will be operated by HMRC, not by Revenue Scotland, the Scottish Tax Authority, so it isn't a fully devolved tax. The Scottish Parliament only has control over the rate. HMRC are going to issue special PAYES codes to identify Scottish taxpayers, and employers and pension providers will use these to deduct the Scottish rate of income tax. HMRC will be contacting employers this autumn and will be writing to Scottish taxpayers later to tell them whether they think they are a Scottish taxpayer or not. Perhaps the most important question though is what the rate is going to be. I would be very surprised if the Scottish Government sets a rate that is higher than 10% because the UK Government has undertaken not to raise income tax rates during the life of this Parliament. Could Scottish income tax rates be significantly reduced? Probably not, because when the SRIT comes in, the block grant from Westminster will be reduced based on a 10% reduction in income tax. This all suggests that the SRIT will actually be set at 10% and so will not make any difference to Scottish taxpayers at all. And of course, bringing in the SRIT will not be cheap. HMRC has said it will cost between 30 million and 35 million, and these costs have to be paid by the Scottish Government. I do wonder why the SRIT is being brought in at all. Would it not make sense to move straight to the Smith Commission proposals that will give the Scottish Government complete control over income tax rates and much more flexibility? Well, that probably would make more sense. But on the other hand, perhaps it is a good idea to test the system with the SRIT to make sure it does actually work before the more significant changes are brought in.